Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to El Toro Dice Club. Here we are, July 4th. Uh, got red, white, and blue, right? How about that for a little theme? Unfortunately, I didn't have a white die, but you get the idea. Anyway, uh, so I posted up yesterday, or the other day, I posted up the uh, 36 probability. Uh, that was me doing a semi-controlled throw. Today, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a complete random shooter. Uh, gonna have my wife out here today. She's going to do random shooting. We're gonna take 36 rolls and see what happens. Uh, again, our hard ways are gonna be marked with a green chip and all our 36 are gonna be marked with a white. So we're gonna get started. Hopefully you guys enjoy this one. We'll see just how close to the uh, chart, odds chart or the probability chart these things really are. Yeah, she is always in a hurry to throw. Here we go. Speaking of being in a hurry to throw, guys, when you walk up to a craps table, when you get to the casino, don't be in such a huge hurry to put the dice in your hands and throw your money away. Most of you that do that don't have a plan. So, hold on a second. No. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. I'm gonna still count that. It's a six. Uh, I'm gonna try to count up these chips though. There's five. I gotta make sure I got 36 of them, right? I don't have enough. There's 20. 25, 30. 35 and 36. Okay, yeah, that's gonna be a lot of rolls. So hopefully, guys, we're gonna go through this pretty quick. I'll be talking while she's throwing the dice. Uh, that way, we don't have to worry about much anything. Anyway, what I'm saying is, don't be in such a hurry to throw the dice. Uh, you know, without a plan, you're going to lose. Without a plan, you guys are going to lose. That's a 538. Uh, you know, I talk about it on all the videos, which is, sorry guys, I, you know what? I think I'm going too quick. There we go. That way y'all can see these things. Um, go with a plan. Go with a plan. Go with an intention, an exact strategy. Go with something that you're going to, that you're going to stick to. That's a hard six. So we're going to use green right here for that one. And put one away. Okay? Go with a plan. And like I said last time was, if you're going to get a strategy, make it simple. Make it a simple strategy. Something you can just, you know off the top of your head or it's easy to do. Uh, five, three, eight. It's something that's easy to, easy to remember, not complicated. Uh, and it's something that if you had to explain it to a friend, it'd be real quick and easy to do. It's 12. Put that right on the 12 right there. All right, here we go. So far, so good. Random shooter's doing good. Two, four, five, there's six of them right there. Seven, so not bad. Every now and then, you guys, you're going to run into somebody just like this. Random shooter. Never really held the dice, just picks them up and throws them. Gets lucky and throws them forever for a long time. There's a 527. So it's not bad. It does happen. I've seen it, I've been there, I've been part of it. You just can't be afraid to bet, right? Now, you know, some of you guys are probably going, well man, I thought you just said earlier in your last couple of videos that you try not to bet on anybody. Well, you're right, I, I try not to. But unfortunately I'm a gambler, so it's hard not to. Sometimes when you're up in winnings and you just start playing, you just start playing because you want to play. You're up. You're on. You're on the house money, and you're hoping you can catch another wave. Uh, five, three, eight. Uh, it doesn't always happen that way. It doesn't always happen that way. Good throw. Six, three, nine. So anyway, be uh, be real careful with you know who you're betting on and what you're betting on, and uh, try to. Try to take your bankroll and stretch it as far as you can, right? And you don't do that by gambling on everybody at the table. 628. So what I do is, when I walk up to a table and I'm looking at the all talls and all smalls, if there's a table that has that on it, and you see that a lot of these things are being marked, that's a good table, guys. 
That, that means that person's actually throwing. That's six five eleven. Mm -hmm. Means that that person's actually throwing some numbers. You may want to jump on there. Don't be afraid. If they've already started marking both sides, that person's shooting. They've been shooting for a little bit. And when you walk up, ask them. Say, hey, how long is this? How long have they had the dice for? They'll tell you. They'll tell you. Five two seven. Okay, there you go. So anyway, walk up to a table, check out for all tall smalls. That's a good sign about how the table's doing. That's what I do. That's my gauge. My second gauge is I look at how many people are on the table and how much money are in their chip racks. And I'll ask them, did these guys buy in for several thousand or did they buy in for a couple hundred? And if this guy standing next to me in the space says, yeah, I bought in for a couple hundred, and he looks like he's got about a couple, you know, four, five hundred, six hundred, seven hundred in his chip rack, I'm probably going to get in. Because that means that table's hot. It's trending on the hot side. Now, if you walk up to a table and it's not very loud, and all you see is one or two numbers, hold off. Hold off. That's a hard four. That means that a table is either one and done, two and seven, three and seven. You're not getting many points established or many, many throws by the shooter or the shooters on the table. Be cautious. That's a cold table. Now, some of you, like me, might be able to warm it up pretty quick uh, just because we have a, a way of throwing the dice. Some of you don't. And those of you that don't, I'm telling you, cautious, caution you, be careful. That's how you get burnt. That's how you lose your bankroll in about the first 15, 20 minutes. So be cautious. And here we go. Look at this random shooter. She's only throwing three sevens. Not bad. And honest to God, she's literally just picking up these dice. And just how I give them to her. Just like this. And she's just throwing them. Uh, doesn't really have a, a grip to them at all. She's kind of, how are you gripping them? Put your hand out there, how are you gripping them? I mean, I just hold them like that. I'm going to sit here. I'm going to put the dice out here. I'm going to give you the dice. That's a seven. So put, grab, show them how you're holding the dice. Just like that, right? Just grabbing them. A little, little grip. No worries. Nothing magical, nothing fancy, right? My wife is not a uh, craps thrower. She's not a Craps King, she's not a sharp shooter, she's not a dice setter. She's the one that likes to go up there and have fun. Now, sometimes we'll go to the craps table and then she'll stand there for about five or ten minutes and then she disappears. Uh, it's always it's always difficult. Look at that, the first five? Wow. It's always difficult to stand there as a spectator for hours on hours, especially when the table's full. Because then you really can't see what's going on. Uh, you know, you get you probably start getting frustrated when you're there just standing and watching. That's our first 10 as well. Wow. Okay. You get a little frustrated standing there. And then if you're there with your wife like I am, don't get frustrated with her because she's standing there. You'll be lucky the fact that you got a wife that enjoys going to the casino as much as you do, right? Don't take those small things for granted. And I'm not saying that because she's here. I'm saying that because it's true. You know, if you're if you're fortunate enough to share a hobby with your spouse, whether it's golf, tennis, bowling, uh, playing bridge, I mean, whatever it is, right? Playing crap, gambling. If you're fortunate enough to have a spouse that that enjoys spending time with you on whatever the occasion may be, man, hang on to them, cherish that, cherish those moments. Learn, dice out, off the table. Learn to uh, make the most of those opportunities. Make the most of them. Because you never know when you may not be able to enjoy them together after a while. You know, your life gets in the way or other things happen. Second five, look at that. My favorite number, and you can't even hit it. But you are smacking the nine, though. Jeez, though. Look at this. I love it. All right, here they come. 
Here they come. So we're gauging 36 rolls on a random shooter for probability, right? Honestly, the way it works is whether you're random or a dice setter, you're gonna get pretty close. Look at that, another five, golly. You're gonna get pretty close to the numbers on the chart. And I'll, you'll see it here in a minute. Five, four, nine. You'll see it here in a minute. Yeah, today we'll be deciding that we're, we're probably going to go to the casino later on tonight. I'm going to do some warm-up today. Uh, you know, kids are all out. In-laws are in-laws. Are in -laws. <laughs> right? they, you know, they're probably going to bed early. Who knows? You know, one or two margaritas and they're done. But uh, we're going to probably go to the casino later on tonight. Probably stay there for several hours, enjoy our enjoy our four day weekend. All the way through Monday, we may even stay up there. I don't know. Another hard four. Look, every time she struck that four, it's come in pairs. Twenty two. That's awesome. That's great. You make a lot of money on that four like that with her guys. Y'all know it too. But anyway, we're getting close to our uh, final. And if you uh, if she finishes up, if she finishes up on a seven, then we'll call it done. But if she if she doesn't finish up on a seven, I'm gonna have her keep rolling. So if those of you that want to use her roll and check your betting strategy, there's our first four, nat natural four, or three, one, four. If those of you want to just use her rolls on your betting strategy and check it out for a random shooter and just try it out, heck, go for it. She's actually doing quite well. 426. Not bad at all. Not bad at all. So, anyway, we're going to post this up. It's going to be our second uh, second uh, 36 dice roll probability video. It's going to be a 6, another hard 6. It's going to be our... What the heck? What have I done here? Oh, that maybe is that is That's it. that is it's five. You're done. Yeah, so I got three green pitch. Yep. Yeah. See, even even doing this, guys. All right, just keep on shooting. Keep on shooting until you throw a seven. Mark with a different color then, maybe. Or uh. All right, good idea. All right, so we're going to use our we're going to use our uh, what are these? Can't even read. Five thousand dollar chips. That's a that's a eight. So anyway, I forgot what I was saying, but. We're going to check the probability on this. Use, your, use the rolls if you want. Uh, we're going to do probably five days of probability. We're going to do different kinds of three types of rolls. Uh, there's our set. Okay. So not bad. We're going to do a couple different throws. So today this throw was, was uh, my wife, non-shooter, uh, random, pure random. I just handed her the dice and she pitched them. So let's see what we got here. We should have 36. Plus two, 38 is what we should have here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, and the two extras that we got, right? So there we go. So on the chart, there's one way to make a 12, one way to make a two, two ways to make an 11. So she did one. She didn't even touch the three this time. You got multiple ways to make the 10. She only hit it once. There's the impressive one. That's a money maker right there. Four fours, four fives, six sixes. Seven nines, five eights with the extra, plus the extra, sorry. There you go. Six sevens plus an extra. So pretty much on target to the chart if you guys if you guys have ever seen one. Uh, pretty much on target. It's on point. So when they uh, when they tell you hey the uh, the odds are in the house's favor based on the the combinations of these die. They tell you, hey, the odds, 
you better believe it because they, they actually, they didn't just luck out and decide to create a game. They built it based on studying what these dice do. That's what they've done. So you already know, if you're gonna play any kind of game, I would pick six and eight. So if you're gonna play heavy on a number, that's why everybody always says, hey, walk up to the six and eight with $6. Put a six dollar six and a six dollar eight. It hits twice. You're a winner. Well, yeah, you're you're a winner. But what are you gonna do with six dollars? I mean, heck, you can't even buy a cup of coffee at the casino. Shoot, you can't even buy a cup of coffee. If it were me, I'd walk in here just like that. Give me a hundred and twenty. Let's say twenty dollars, right? I'd say, look, give me a hundred and twenty dollars on that six. Boom, and it hits. Don't put your money on anything else. Just wait until the six hits. When it collects, you're gonna collect 140 and down. There you go, you're finished. You made $140. No problem, that's, that's a win. Now you can go buy a cup of coffee and you can go get a, you know, a buffet for both of you or you can go to the gift shop and buy something or pay it and then move it to the eight. See what happens. You already hit your six. If it comes back to back, oh well, you've lost, right? You lost your opportunity at making it. But if it comes back and hits the six, because you got a lot more combinations to hit the six and eight than you do the five and nine, but if it comes back, you've made another $140. And guess what? That dealer, if you tell him, move me from the eight to the nine, he'll say, okay, done. Hand you back your money if you're here or hand it over here where she is. And they'll say, okay, rolls a nine, you get another 140. Then you can tell him, move me from the nine to the four. Okay, it's called chasing. But guess what? You've only got $100 at risk at the first time. You hit it once, you hit it a second time, look, now you're just moving their money around. You're gonna make the dealer do a little bit of work. Okay, throw them a nickel, here we go. This is for you guys. Here's one for you. And then how about if you play them a hard eight, a hard 10, or something. Give them a field bet, give them anything. They'll be most appreciative and they will gladly, gladly move your money for you. So that's another, that's another way to play, which I'll, uh, I'll show you that probably on the next set of videos. But for right now, guys, like, subscribe. I really appreciate those of you who are sending me comments. Uh, thank you, thank you so much for the positive feedback. I try not to make too many mistakes, but again, I'm an amateur at, at videography and counting the money backwards and doing dealing and all that stuff. Thank you so much for uh, subscribing to my channel. I really do appreciate it. I like the feedback, and by the way, uh, for those of you who are watching the channel, uh, it's really flattering, I'll just tell you this, it's incredibly flattering to uh, have some of the big boys subscribe to your channel. Although it may not mean much to anybody, it means a lot to me. So thank you so much. If you guys want to reach out to me uh, and uh, we can have a conversation, we can talk about stuff and kick some ideas together, whatever it is you want to do, uh, you know, hey, let's do it. I don't mind. And it's like I got nothing to do all day other than gamble. <laughs> so, guys, like, subscribe. Thank you so much. Y'all have a happy fourth. Peace.